This is Norman Kissinger for Redeeming the Time Brothers Ministries, and I want to talk to you from and read a passage in Mark chapter 10, verses 46 through 52, actually the story of blind Bartimaeus. I'm going to read this, and then uh, we're going to talk about it for a minute. Now they, Jesus and his disciples, I believe, came to Jericho. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man saying to him, be, be of good cheer, arise, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he arose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. I was doing this as a devotion for a Bible club at a <clears throat> local skate park in my town where we do a uh, Bible club for... Um, Young Faith in Christ, which is a local ministry to youth. And um, <clears throat> I was, as I've been going through the book of Mark with pretty much, not kidding every story, but a lot of the stories in the book of Mark with the uh, kids here at the, at the Bible club, we come across this passage here. And with each passage, of course, I'm looking for kind of the, what the main theme is or what a good, um, you know, uh, what, what Jesus may be trying to say. And some of the stories are very familiar, similar. So, you know, somebody gets healed or something happens. And so they may not seem to have any kind of a, of a special theme to them. Just do, Jesus doing exactly what Jesus did, which was healing other people. Uh, but as I was going through this one here and getting ready to do a devotion on it with the kids, one of the things I noticed in here was not so much Jesus and not so much Bartimaeus, but I noticed the crowd. And that's kind of a strange thing to sort of stand out here, but I think it illustrates a point about our Christian faith that I think is important. And I was telling the kids this. So <clears throat> when Jesus is coming by, large crowds around him here, many, many people, and this man hears and probably had heard that Jesus had the ability to be able to heal, obviously. So, you know, he wanted some of that too. He needed it. And so he's, you know, screaming and hollering for Jesus's help, doing exactly what everybody who wanted Jesus to heal them would do. And so he can't get there on his own. He's going to have to call out until Jesus actually hears him. He's calling out so loudly that the crowd basically, I think he's irritating people. They're just telling him to be quiet, okay? But Jesus, in the midst of all of the people thronging him and people making statements and doing different things, Jesus is actually here, um, stops and calls him over. And that's, again, right along the lines of what Jesus would do. That's, that's, that's his MO of what he would do um, in healing different people. Nothing really new here. When Jesus decided to call him over, then the crowd is like with Bartimaeus, kind of like, oh, good, hey, good for you. Yeah, he's called you. Come on over and come, come over here to where Jesus is at. Now, what I find different about this story here, or I think that, that caught my eye or my mind, was the attitude of the crowd and Bartimaeus and his need. And I think that as I was telling the young people here in, in, in with this story here, is that it doesn't matter if the crowd agrees with us. It doesn't matter if the world disagrees with us. We don't need to be thinking about the world when it comes to our relationship to Jesus Christ. Our relationship to Jesus Christ is something between us and Christ. Whether he accepts us like he did here and heals Bartimaeus, or like the story of the rich young ruler where Jesus he walks, the rich ruler walks away because he did not, was not able to give to Christ what Christ required of him. But either way, it was between the rich young ruler and Christ, or it was between Bartimaeus and Christ, 
or the woman who had the issue of blood as Jesus was going to go to heal someone and, and Christ. It was between them and Christ what their need was, not what the crowd or the world wanted. You know, earlier on, um, the disciples... Uh, mothers were taking their kids to Jesus and wanted him to bless them and and um, and um, speak to them. And the disciples, you remember, sent them away and said that that and, and rebuked them for that. And Jesus rebuked the disciples for rebuking them and said, "Hey, they've come to me, and you need to receive the kingdom of heaven like a little child." But there again, it was between the mothers and the kids and Christ, and everybody else's opinion didn't matter in that case. And I know this is a simple thought and a simple theme, but I wonder how much in our Christian faith do we attempt to try to um, put, let other people's opinion, if you will, get in the mix of what's going on, okay? And rather than just, just going and seeking God and finding out what he wants. And I was telling these young people that, um, you know, as they go to school, and they live out their faith, or those that are Christians in the group that would live out their faith. They're going to have people that are going to agree. They're going to have people that are, hate them. They're going to have people that dislike them. They're going to have people that think that their Christianity is a nuisance. They're going to have people that agree and are, are cheering or whatever. They're going to have all kinds of people, but it doesn't matter where the crowd's cheering. It didn't matter if the crowd said, come on over because Jesus now wants you, or keep your mouth shut because Jesus isn't interested the crowd had no opinion in this matter. It was between Bartimaeus and Jesus. What did Bartimaeus want and what did Jesus have to offer? What did Bartimaeus need and what did Jesus say that he was going to do while he was on earth, which he did? And that was heal people, cast out demons, okay? And that's basically healing people, cast out demons, and talking about the kingdom of God, okay? And many other things, but basically, generally speaking, he did those, those things and do other miracles, like, of course, the feeding of the, of the 5,000. But that was between him and the 5,000, whether the disciples, you know, um, in a sense would agree, disagree, if other people believed uh, that he could take care of the problem. None of that mattered. It was between him and the person who has the need. And I know this is a simple concept, but the idea here is, I think, for us, is or what I was impressed with was that Bartimaeus did not care because it didn't matter if the crowd was for him or the crowd was against him. He was going to spend the rest of his life holding out a cup, getting a few pennies here and there to maybe get a little morsel of bread for the next 30 or 40 years of his life until he died, however old he was. And um, he needed Jesus to heal him so that he could prosper in life. Okay. And uh, so, and he knew Jesus could heal, so he kept calling out to Jesus until he got what he wanted from Christ. And what the rest of the world thought about it, he did not care. When they said for him to be quiet, he shouted louder because he still needed Jesus. Their opinion didn't matter. He needed Jesus, so he called out to Jesus until Jesus responded to him. I think that if we were not careful, and I know when I was younger as a Christian, I'm getting a little bit older and... I don't know if I'm getting more spiritual, maybe I'm getting more grumpy, but as I get older, I don't care as much about what other people think. That is not as important to me. I do not want to make enemies or have enemies, but I'm more concerned about whether or not God is happy with what I'm doing. And I'm more concerned about my needs that only God can meet. People can give their opinions all they want to because opinions are cheap. The opinions of these people here for blind Bartimaeus meant nothing one way or the other. They were going to lose nothing if Bartimaeus got healed. They were going to lose nothing if he, if he didn't get healed. They lost nothing. Their opinion that he should keep his mouth shut or their opinion that he can now go to Jesus and they're agreeing with it. Either way, it didn't matter because it would be nothing to them. Most of the time, people will express their opinions, especially if it would, in a sense, would come to our faith, when in reality, that, that means nothing. They lose nothing. Anybody who can have an opinion about something that costs them nothing because it's not going to affect their life is the last person to listen to. As my boss says at work, I work at, um, as a clinical director at a, a local boys' ranch, and, uh, and my supervisor says this statement. It says um, that if you're not working in the kitchen, you don't have any right to um, complain about the meal. And the eye is, 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 I think that's an old phrase, but basically meaning that if you don't have any skin in the game, then you don't have any business telling anybody else in a sense what they should or shouldn't be doing. Well, I've got skin in the game when I need something from Christ. 
And Christ has skin in the game if he commands me to be seeking him and praying for things and adjusting my life around to what he wants and ignoring the crowd and whether or not they think that something is good or something is bad. So I know this is um, just a simple old Bible story that um, I've heard many times in Sunday school and heard preached on a few times in my lifetime. But for some reason, this time around, the crowd really stood out to me and how that... Um, Bartimaeus and Christ, both of them, did not care. Jesus even didn't go, oh, is he irritating you? Well, I'll leave him alone because he's irritating you guys. You know, I wouldn't want that to happen. Um, and Bartimaeus didn't care if they didn't like the fact that he was shouting and breaking their eardrums because he had a desperate need. And so Christ had the, had the answer, Bartimaeus had the need, and the crowd didn't really matter. There are times when probably we should listen to the crowd or we should pay attention to what others believe. But when it comes to our personal faith, though no one join me, still I will follow. Though no one join me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. Our faith has to be our faith with Christ. And part of the reason that people struggle, I think, in life is because sooner or later as a Christian, and this may be a slightly different subject here, but sooner or later as a Christian, you're going to have to come to a realization that I can read about the Old Testament saints and how God worked in their life. I can read about, I can, I can hear my grandmother, who is a Christian, tell stories, and my mom tell stories about their faith and the way that God at different times worked in their life or whatever. Or I can hear other believers. But I must have individual relationship with Christ where he is meeting my needs and taking care of me and is there for me so that when I can say in an experience that Christ is always there and we have a prayer answering God. That's what makes a real faith. So this is vital that we don't listen to the crowd and that we are doing exactly what God tells us to do. And we're being obedient to him. We shouldn't listen to the crowd if it's about asking God for something. We shouldn't listen to the crowd if it's about what he's told us to do and be obedient, whether that's popular or not popular. It should be about Christ and us and our obedience to him. And everybody else falls by the wayside. May we always be like blind Bartimaeus, where we are going to shout out for God and ignore the crowd and get what we need from him because that's the only vital relationship. Everybody else here was going to go home and it was going to make not one bit of difference, but it made a big difference to both Bartimaeus and to Jesus. Whether the crowd loves you or hates you, let the crowd go home and interact with your Savior. This is Norm Kissinger from Redeeming the Time Brothers Ministries. God bless you. I hope you have a great week.